Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about my top 10 most complimented designer fragrances. We recently did a video where we talked about my most complimented niche fragrances. So this video, I thought I would do the other side of things and do my most complimented designer fragrances. So these designer fragrances, if you don't know the difference, the easy way to tell is designer ones. They are also mainly like a fashion brand stuff like Prada, stuff like Dior, where they also make fashion stuff. Whereas niche fragrances, uh, I'll just grab one for example, uh, this one, Zerjoff Naxos, this is exclusively to do with fragrance. So they only make fragrance. Whereas designer ones, they make both and they make them more mainstream, more likable to the mass audience. Whereas niche ones are more for people like me and you who like fragrances a lot more than the average person. So without further ado guys, we are gonna get straight on with the video. Before we do, just wanna say if you are new, don't forget to drop a like on this video, it really does help out on the channel. And if you're a fan of fragrances, don't forget to subscribe as well because uh, we're growing a great community and we would be more than happy to have you. So with that said, we are gonna kick things off with the first of two honorable mentions. So the first one I wanna include here because uh, even though I absolutely love this one and the quality of this one is probably one of the highest ones on the list. It just does not perform and it just doesn't reach out to people as much as I would like it to. And if it did, it would probably get a lot more compliments, but with recent reformulations, uh, it's just been so watered down. The performance just isn't there, unfortunately. Uh, but apart from that, it is a great fragrance. It is one of my favorite smells and it's this one here, Lanwe de Lam by YSL. And this is just such a nice, alluring fragrance where when you smell it you just want to get closer to that person oh, man. so good quite powdery a lot of cardamom in it quite spicy but just done in such a good way i've had great reactions with this one mainly from people whenever i'm like going close to them and stuff like that and like talking quite close uh, but whenever i like just like walking down the street and stuff i don't think i've ever had a compliment with it um, but if people can smell you with this on, with this one on, then it is great for reactions. Perfect for uh, a date night, uh, for autumn and winter. And you could probably get away with it with spring as well. Uh, also, this is quite nice if you spray a lot of it on your clothes. Uh, you can usually smell it like the next day uh, and a few days later as well. So this is a really nice one for like an afternoon in the autumn. But it just does not perform, which is unfortunate. Next up on the honorable mentions list, this one is kind of the opposite of YSL Lanwe de Lom. This one is a little bit more professional. Uh, this one I normally wear to the office, and this is mainly when I get compliments from this one, uh, is when I'm in an office setting. But this one does great whenever I have people come around my house and uh, they go and smell some of my aftershaves, and I show them this one, and every time I'm like, oh my God, that is one of the best ones you've got which is a surprise because it's this one here, Mont Blanc Individual. And this one is actually really surprising because it's the cheapest one on the list. I paid for, I think this is, for a 50 mil bottle, and I've gone through quite a lot of this, as you can see. For 50 mil of this, I think I paid with shipping 12 pounds, which is just crazy because this, I'm just gonna smell it quickly. <sighs> it just reminds me of working uh, in my old office job that I had and it just is great. It's so clean. It's so professional It just smells like fresh laundry detergent and it has got like a really nice Raspberry note in here as well as like vanilla uh, and other sweetness you can see this getting quite annoying if you overspray it So I always try and tend to do like three to five. I never try and overspray on this one uh, But the performance is good. It is quite decent and like I said um, out in the office setting mainly uh, I have had good reactions from this one. Uh, so coming in at the other honorable mention spot, Mont Blanc Individual. Okay guys, we are gonna kick things off with the number 10 spot. This one is a clubbing fragrance and this is probably the most known clubbing fragrance in the fragrance community. So a few years ago, whenever I was 18 years old and I was first getting into like, you know, going out and going to clubs and stuff like that, I thought I'll just buy this one and just see what the hype's all about. I did from the ages of 16 to 18 wear a lot of Versace Eros, so it's not that one. Uh, although that one would be in the list, I'd probably say, um, but this one that I'm gonna talk about has had a little bit better reactions. Um, they both have great performance, but the one that I did decide to choose is this one here, 
Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mail. So this is just a really nice bubble gum pear smell. Really almost, I think it's minty almost. It's got a nice like freshness to it as well. I'm really running low on the amount of this I've got left. And there's been a fair few clones of this one that have come out in recent times. One of them is called like 9pm. I'm not sure who it's by, uh, but that is a really good clone. One of my friends has that. And I was like, are you wearing Ultra Mail? And he's like, no, I'm wearing 9pm. So um, this is just inspired a lot of other fragrances. 9pm, uh, uh, Latafa Rams. I have got a bottle of that. I've probably hardly sprayed it because I've got this. Uh, but this is just great. Every time I've been out clubbing, uh, I've always had like one of my friends say, oh, what are you wearing? You know, you smell quite good. I can smell you. But that's kind of like the main times where I wear this is if I go out, uh, I can't see myself really wearing this uh, to the office and stuff like that and to work. Uh, this is mainly like a club in or going out fragrance and it does good for that, for reactions. But I've put this at the number 10 spot because I don't really go out clubbing too much. So this just hasn't gotten me the most amount of compliments that it probably could have if I wore it in a different setting. And whenever I was first getting into fragrances, this one actually was my favorite smell at one point in time. I just could not get enough of it. Uh, so coming at the number 10 spot, you've got Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Male. Okay, coming in at the number nine spot. This one is the opposite of Ultra Male. This one, I would probably never wear to the club. Um, I might not wear it going out unless it's like a, a formal occasion. This one I would mainly wear to like a nice clean setting uh, stuff like work you know just stuff like casual almost i like to describe this as the white collar shirt fragrance and it's just a great description for it it's so soapy clean uh, it's this one here by prada prada lom and i've talked about this one before on the channel uh, in like the top 10 office fragrances the top 10 interview fragrances and oh man it is such a nice fragrance this has got like i said a really nice powdery iris note it just smells like fresh laundry detergent. This is super strong as well. This performs great. Uh, you don't want to overspray this one because again, with the powderiness to it, it could get quite nauseating to some people. But if you can spray the right amount on this, I try and do three to five sprays of this one. And it's just the perfect amount where it's not too much, but people can still smell you. And whenever they do get a smell, uh, this also does leave quite a nice scent trail. You will get great compliments on this. I have worn this casually. I've worn it to work. Either time uh, is done great. And my girlfriend really likes this one too, which if my girlfriend likes it, chances are uh, it's going to be a good fragrance for compliments. So coming at the number nine spot, you have got Lom by Prada. Coming in at the number eight spot, this one is super versatile. You can wear this all year round, day and night. I remember I wore this a lot. I actually kind of chose this as my signature scent for... Uh, quite a while, I'd probably say for like three or four months, I wore it almost every other day, which I have not done in quite a while, which is why it's lower down on the list. It's also been discontinued, so I'm kind of doing a bit less uh, wears of this one, but it's still great. You have got other options from the house now, uh, but the one I am going to be talking about at the number eight spot is this one here, Acca de Joe Profumo. So this is still an amazing fragrance. You have got the Parfum or Profondo, which are quite similar. I mean, they're not the same. They're never going to be, in my opinion, as good as Profumo, but I mean, they're the next best option, really. Uh, and Profumo is just a aquatic with incense. It's such a manly smell. It's so professional. It's got a really nice note of patchouli in here. There's just something about this that is just so good. There's a reason why in Fragcom this was talked about so much because it is such a good fragrance. I've had amazing reactions with this. Um, I've worn it to every single setting imaginable, uh, and it just does great. I've had really good compliments with this one, um, but it's lower down the list just because I'm a bit scared to wear it, just because, um, I mean, you can kind of see for a 75 mil bottle, I don't know if you can see the juice in there, but it's about halfway. So I'm trying to go a bit lighter on the sprays on this one, but coming at the number eight spot, such a good one. If you can find a bottle of it, definitely pick it up. I would highly recommend this one. Coming in at the number eight spot is Aqua de Joe Profumo. Okay, coming in at the number seven spot. This one surprised me actually by how good the compliment factor is on it. Um, I got it because it was 20 pounds and I was like, oh, that is almost a full bottle whenever I bought it. And I was like, I'm just gonna wear it if I ever go to the gym or if I ever like need a fragrance that I can just chuck on and not have to worry about it too much because 
uh, the DNA of it is super safe. But surprisingly, uh, super safe and super fresh seem to work great for compliments. And uh, the one that we are talking about is from the House of Versace. Uh, it's not the one that you're probably thinking of. It's this one here. And it's Versace Pour Homme. And the best way I can describe this, and a few people have agreed with me, that this fragrance smells exactly how the liquid looks in it. It just smells like fresh, clean water. And yeah, that's probably the best way I can describe it. It's got like a tangerine with a really light tonka bean, if we're gonna go into specifics with it. But it just smells fresh, clean, almost aquatic, almost powdery, but really light on the powderiness and the aquaticness. Just fresh and clean. And like I said, I did not think this would get as much compliments as it does. But for some reason, because of the lightness and how safe it is, it is really good. And the performance actually lasts me all day. Thinking about it now, I sprayed this on in the morning before I started work. So this would have been about uh, half seven. And then at six o'clock in the afternoon, I went to go and pick up one of my friends. And she said, either you or your car smells amazing. I did actually spray some of it on my hand. And I was like, is it, is it this by any chance? And then she said, yeah, that, that's the smell. And it was, it was this like 10 hours later. So it does still sort of linger around. I, I'm thinking maybe now, uh, actually I sprayed it, went straight into the car and then I went to work and then I came back in the car. Um, so possibly um, it was still lingering around in my car, but you can still smell it on my hand. So, I mean, it does die down to a skin scent, but it is still a great one for compliments. So coming in at the number seven spot, this one's also been out for a very long time. And it's this one here. Versace Pour Homme. Coming in at the number six spot again, like Aqua de Joe Profumo, this one has been discontinued, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I have talked about it a fair few times in other videos on the channel, so I don't wanna overdo it. I know it's discontinued, it's very hard to get, but I wanted to include it in this list because of the compliment factor on this is insane. This has probably got high, the highest hit rate out of any fragrance that I have. Almost every single time I wear this, I know I'm gonna get a compliment or someone say that I smell nice. And I wore this yesterday as my scent of the day and I got a compliment on it. So the track record is still there. It's still great. Um, I mean, I wore it on the 14th of September. So not usually when you would wear this fragrance. This is more of a summer fragrance. And the one that we're talking about is this one here. Bulgari Aqua Amara. So number six spot. This one I really wanted to include in here. Even though it's discontinued, the compliment factor on this thing is incredible for the spring and summer. I have also got a backup bottle of this. This is a 50 ml bottle. I'm about halfway through and I just had to get another bottle of this thing. Tangerine, it just smells like a blast of like salty sea air with a freshly peeled tangerine. So good. So coming at the number six spot, great for compliments and it just lasts all day long. You've got Bulgari Aqua Amara. If you can find a bottle of it, please get this and then send it my way because <laughs> if you can find a bottle of this, this gem, uh, I definitely recommend you pick it up. Okay, breaking into the top five spot. These five are hard hitters. All of these ones on the list are, are very good fragrances. I have worn them a lot, uh, mainly because of the compliments, but also because I just absolutely love the smell of them. Speaking of, this one, whenever I first ever smelled it, just blew me away and it made me like realize, oh my God, fragrances are just amazing. <laughs> uh, and the one that we're talking about at the number five spot is Dolce & Gabbana The One. And this is the Eau de Parfum version. And you can just see how much I've used of this. So usually I'll decant fragrances and you'll slowly see them in the videos drop the level. This one uh, is my bottle. I haven't decanted this. I have had it since 2020. And out of all my fragrances, uh, this one I've probably sprayed the most. It's such a dumb reach fragrance where you can just spray it. And this falls into a similar ballpark to Lanwy de Lom. But for me, this one is just a little bit more wearable. And I, I need to wear this more. Oh my God. I might wear this tomorrow into work. I forgot how much I like this one. <laughs> so this is um, 
This is such a clean and spicy fragrance. It's so, so almost like relaxing when you smell it. And like I said, whenever I first ever smelled this, it was actually the Eau de Toilette version, but I smelled it and I was like, oh my God. I've smelt something like this before, probably because it was very popular back in the day. Um, but even still, this thing is just amazing. <laughs> like if I smelled this on someone, I would probably have to compliment on it because it is just so good. Uh, funnily enough, whenever I was in London, um, I was in Paddington Station Sainsbury's and um, one of the workers there had this on. I knew for a fact that he had this on and I was like, bro, are you wearing uh, Dolce & Gabbana the one by any chance? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I am. And surprisingly, this actually gets um, negative reviews for the performance, but I could smell this guy and uh, he said that he sprayed it on uh, before his shift, which was probably around eight o'clock he would have started. And uh, this would have been about two o'clock in the afternoon. I was going there to get lunch and I could still smell it on him. So uh, gave him a, a compliment, but I've also had great compliments on this too. My girlfriend really likes this uh, and other people around me, when I spray this, also really like it. So coming in at the number five spot is Dolce & Gabbana the one, Eau de Parfum, so good. I am definitely gonna wear this one tomorrow into work. Coming in at the number four spot. This one is my girlfriend's favorite fragrance. The one that we are talking about, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. So I decided to go for the Eau de Parfum version. I decided against getting the Eau de Toilette because it's a little bit fresh. It's not really what I would go for. I would only kind of wear that towards uh, the summertime. I didn't want to get the Parfum because I feel like it's a little bit too um, heavy on a few of the, uh, the spicier notes. The Eau de Parfum is just perfect in the middle and probably the most versatile out of all of them. So uh, this so this has got a beautiful note of grapefruit in it and it's just so classy. And even though a few years ago, whenever this first came out, this was, this was basically Sauvage back in the day. Um, but now with Sauvage coming out, people have sort of tended to forget about this one. And this is kind of like an under the radar um, gatekeeper fragrance, I feel like. Maybe in the fragrance community, no. Uh, people call this boring, people call it, you know, not exciting, old, old fashioned, just like the signature blue fragrance that everyone knows. I'm probably gonna disagree with them because if you wanna get compliments, most people, because of Sauvage, um, will probably tend to overlook this. So this is kind of like a, if you know, you know. So if you're in the fragrance community um, and you know about this fragrance, but you haven't bought it yet, I definitely recommend you do, but this thing gets an amazing amount of compliments for me. Uh, it lasts a very long time. It does leave a, a scent trail. Um, so the performance is no issue with this thing. It is just so versatile. So you can wear it to any occasion. It's so classy. It's a Chanel. So um, it's just got a really nice poshness to it. Uh, so coming in at the number four spot, really good for compliments. If I ever go uh, away somewhere like a, on like a weekend trip, I'll just wear this because I know I can wear it to basically any setting. So coming in at the number four spot, you have got Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Okay, so coming in at the number three spot, surprisingly, this one actually beat Bleu de Chanel in terms of the compliment factor. And uh, I was surprised by that because I thought Bleu de Chanel got me a lot more compliments, but it didn't. And the one that we are talking about in the number three spot, this one, uh, has been talked about a lot in the fragrance community. It's one of my favorite designer fragrances. Uh, I just love the smell of it. I love the, the dirty patchouli, like almost earthiness to it, but it's so fresh and clean at the same time. They've done, they've done this one in a really weird but nice way. Um, not weird in terms of smell, but like the way how they've done, like the dirty earthiness from the patchouli in here and the incense. But they've also got a really nice shower gel almost deodorant smell from like, the Ambroxin and the other fresh notes in here. And the one that we are talking about is this one here, Versace Dylan Blue. Really cool bottle design. You can't really see it from this angle. Also excuse the way how I'm holding my phone here. I think I've broke my wrist and I cannot hold anything in my right hand. So yeah, you can kind of see it there just the blue. When this hits the light, it's just such a cool bottle design. Look at that. Yeah, so that's why I'm not holding up anything in my right hand. Uh, but number three spot, Dylan Blue, shower gel, deodorant. This thing, uh, in terms of reactions and compliments, is off the charts. The performance on this from the Ambroxan that just gives it a really nice scent trail 
is incredible. I've told the story about this one before, where I would go to work and I would wear niche fragrances. I would wear uh, Aventus. I would wear um, stuff like Perfume Somali Leighton. Um, I would wear Sauvage. I would wear Creed. I would wear Amouage, uh, Reflection Man and stuff like that. I would wear Bleu de Chanel and all the other ones that I've already talked about on this list. And I would never get a compliment on this one. But I wore this one three times into that office. And those three times that I wore it uh, from my fragrance rotation, every time I wore this one, I always got a compliment from the same lady on this one, which is really weird. And my girlfriend also really likes this one. It's probably her second or third favorite uh, behind Bleu de Chanel. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I've almost ran out of this. I've probably got about 20 mil left. And I might pick up another bottle of this because it is quite cheap as well. And I'm surprised that Versace haven't actually done like an eau de parfum to this. Uh, and they've only just done this by itself. So um, keep your eyes out. I have a feeling that they might release an eau de parfum or like an elixir version of this. That might be, that might be quite interesting. But coming in the number three spot, if you want to get compliments and you want the most versatile fragrance on this list, I would probably suggest to you uh, this one or the number two spot, which we'll talk about now. Okay, so coming in at the number two spot, this one doesn't get the love on YouTube that it should. And uh, I might actually do a review video on this one because uh, there's actually not too much out there. And I don't know why, because this is just an amazing fragrance. Again, it is from the house of Chanel. It's this one here, Chanel Allure Home Sport O Extreme. And this one, Whenever I, oh my God, that Tonka bean is just so good. This is so powdery, it's so minty. Uh, it's just so fresh and clean. And whenever people come around my house and I show them all my fragrances, I usually leave this one up until last because I'm always interested to see what they think about it. And every single time I've had people come around and be like, okay, one of the last ones to smell now, um, try this one. So at this point, they had already smelled like, I'd probably say about 30 to 40 fragrances at this point. Um, and I show them this one. Out of every single one that they've tried so far, usually they say that this is their favorite one, which is surprising. Uh, also, um, reactions like in public, I've had great reactions from this one. Um, whenever I go out and I wanna spray this one, uh, this thing does get good reactions. This is a perfect signature scent fragrance as well. If you only want one fragrance, for any occasion, any setting, this is great. And the performance on it is, uh, it is good actually. I probably get for a freshie, I get about four hours of projection and then it does actually kind of last really, really close to a skin scent up until about the 10 hour mark. So performance isn't an issue uh, and it's Chanel as well. So yeah, minty, tangerine, tonka bean, just fresh, just clean. Uh, and it's just so nice, uh, so versatile. Coming in at the number two spot, Chanel Alohom Sport O Extreme. And I will do uh, a full in-depth review of this one fairly soon, I think. And guys, just quickly before we get on with the number one spot, if you haven't already, please don't forget to drop a like on this video. It shows me that you guys enjoy these types of videos uh, and I'll continue doing them. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to drop a like. It only takes a few seconds uh, and it really just helps out on the channel. Okay, and with that said, we are gonna end the video with the number one spot. This one had to be here because um, <laughs> it just is my most complimented fragrance. Uh, it's gonna be a boring one. You probably already know what it's gonna be. So I'll just show it to you. Uh, you probably already knew it. It's this one here, Dior Sauvage. Fresh, clean, and broxen. I feel like this one got me the most amount of compliments out of any fragrance because um, whenever this first came out in 2016, um, I saw Jeremy Fragrance, a video of his pop up, top 10 most complimented fragrances. And this is before he like, you know, got super famous and stuff like that. He probably only had, uh, I'd probably say about 50 to 100,000 subscribers at the time. And the top 10 most complimented video probably was on about 50K vi uh, views. And the number one spot was this one, Dior Sauvage. So this came out, and uh, I remember in December when this first came out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go and buy it. And they actually had an introductory 30% off, I think. So I got 100 mil for 60 pounds back then. 
which was a great deal for this thing. It's the older Toilette version, by the way. And this was actually my introduction to the world of fragrances. This was basically my first proper designer fragrance. And there is still some left in there. There's about a milliliter remaining in here. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna spray it. Probably just gonna keep it so I can smell it and just remind myself of Dior Sauvage, of the time um, whenever I was first getting into fragrances and, oh man, number one, it just has to be in here. I, I wore this before it went mainstream and this was like my secret weapon. I would wear this to school at the time, like I probably say I was, yeah, it would have been about 15, 16. So I wore this from the ages of my entire school, from the ages of 15, all the way up to 18, 19. And um, this, I would just wear the absolute life of it. This is my second bottle, by the way, of the Eau de Toilette. And it was my signature scent. I would wear it every single day. The performance on it is incredible. It leaves an amazing scent trail. And it is such a nice, likeable fragrance. But now, obviously, it's overdone. It's, it's almost too mainstream. Uh, it's almost too good that I don't want to wear it because everyone else smells like it now. But there's a reason why this is my most complimented. So coming in, at the number one spot, it had to be Dior Sauvage. And just because it is at the number one spot, guys, it doesn't mean that this is the number one recommended fragrance. Um, honestly, if I could recommend you any fragrance on this list, uh, I'm probably gonna have to say I would choose Dylan Blue as my recommendation, or the other Versace, and <laughs> this isn't a sponsored video, uh, or Versace Pour Homme, because this thing is going up the list. It's already beaten Prada Alarm. Uh, and Ultra Male, and it's already beaten Aqua de Jo Profumo. So this thing is climbing up the list. Uh, so this surprised me how much compliments this thing gets. And as cliche as it is, I know Jeremy talks about it a lot. If you want the cheapest one on the list for compliments, Mont Blanc Individual is great. So guys, that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you guys have tried any of these designer fragrances. Let me know your top three most complimented as well. Let's try and stay, let's try and stay with designer. What's your top three designer? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Be interested to see. Remember guys, don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe as well and join the community. We honestly would be more than happy to have you there. If you guys wanna try out some two, five or 10 mil sample fragrances, uh, then I have got a link to my Etsy shop in the description below uh, as well. If you guys wanna learn how I've actually grown my collection super quickly uh, for basically hardly any cost out of my own pocket. I have got an online course that teaches you absolutely everything there is to know about decanting your fragrances, putting them into the little bottles uh, and actually making some money back uh, and reinvesting it to buy uh, a lot more fragrances without spending any of your own money. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then there is a link down in the description below. The course is only 10 pounds. I've spent weeks on creating it and making sure the content is relevant. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in and growing your collection, again, there is a link down in the description below for that one. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.